what's your takeaway today? We had a busy week. Um, well, I think, you know, it, it's, a, it's a recovery that's in plain sight that everybody's ignoring. And what I've seen in my career is that typically what happens is that the markets get better before the news gets better. And that seems to be the case here. So like right now, if you look at retail sales, they're almost at the level, same level that they were at the beginning of the year. Um, we're seeing people really starting to get out and drive. So we're seeing oil usage up 62% from its April 24th low. And just in general, things are just getting a lot better. It actually kind of reminds me of what happened back in 2009. A lot of people were saying that there was going to be a second downturn, a second leg of, of, the, uh, of the financial crisis that never came. So what you have right now is you've got a lot of people on the sidelines looking for that correction. But the reality is if this is anything like 2009, it's probably not going to happen. And you're talking about oil and, you know, people are back to driving and the recovery that, you know, that it's happening. And the market does lead often, no doubt. And you mentioned mortgage refinances as well as people are buying homes and refinancing. And so we're seeing that with a big jump. So when you take these things, those are all really optimistic elements. What are you investing in? Um, you know, right now, I think a lot of like the technology stocks, uh, George had mentioned, you know, like Netflix and all those things. I think those have had a really good run here. But I think I think the big discounts right now are anything value based, anything, you know, large, mid, small cap value. They're still very attractive. Uh, their forward PEs are very low. And not to mention, they're paying great dividends. And I always like to say you get a better outcome with income. So it's always a good thing to buy dividend paying stocks. On the other side of that coin, international stocks are still very cheap, particularly on developing and emerging markets. Uh, all great places to put your money, and you're still getting in at, at very low prices here. So you like value, you like some international. When you say international, could you be more specific so people don't invest in something that you didn't mean? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, you know, in general, I think you know any any good international index ETF. Um, you know, talking about like specific companies, like I think one of the larger holdings uh, would be like Nestle, for example. You know, all all those companies right now are, are trading at a very low multiple. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a lot of bank earnings this week. Um, obviously, the ones with the trading desks and investment banking did better. Uh, tell me about your thoughts on the takeaway on the earnings week that we saw. Uh, well, if you look at, like, for example, J.P. Morgan and Goldman, believe it or not, they, they actually beat their earnings this year, which I think for uh, which was very unexpected. Um, you know, certainly not paying attention to Wells Fargo, but, uh, you know, J.P. Morgan, Goldman, City, Bank of America all did really, really well uh, with their earnings. Uh, better than expected, better than, than what they had anticipated. And next week, we have a slew of earnings coming up from IBM to Coca-Cola, Whirlpool, Microsoft, Tesla. Um, 73 S&P 500 names are reporting next week. What are you expecting from earnings season? Um, I, you know, I expect for you know companies like uh, like Pepsi, Coca Cola, uh, Pepsi, Tesla. I, I'm I'm going to anticipate that their earnings are also going to be up. I think they're going to beat expectations as well. So tell me your big picture. We heard from Steven Mnuchin, our Treasury Secretary, today talking about extending PPP programs um, for folks, right? Because there's a lot of talk that we need more fiscal stimulus in addition to the monetary stimulus that's been put in place by the Fed. Um, what are your thoughts on monetary stimulus and fiscal stimulus? Well, I mean, I, I think you know, before this, the Fed basically fired a bazooka at our economy, and the economy responded extraordinarily well. And I think whenever the Fed... Um, uh, and the government puts any kind of stimulus into the market. It's going to have a, a, a great impact. That happened back in 2009. That combined with low rates, you know, people refinancing their mortgage, people are going to have a lot more disposable income. I anticipate that retail sales are going to go up, and I think it's going to have a, a tremendous response to our economy on the upside. How concerned are you that layoffs that have been um, temporary may become permanent and how that could affect our economy in a bad way? Well, I, you know, if I if talking to my own clients who are business owners, believe it or not, they're actually having a hard time getting people to come back to work at this point just because of the uh, of the stimulus that they've received. So, you know, I think in some cases that might have an effect. But I think it, over the, if you look at things over the long term, I think, you know, looking at jobless claims, I think we're we're going to see that that's not going to be an issue. And then what's the final takeaway? I mean, the big picture, you're, you're feeling more optimistic, right? Are you investing and saying, hey, whatever I buy today is going to be higher in 2021 and 2022? 
Absolutely. You know, any personally, any cash that I have, I'm putting to work in the in the areas that I mentioned before, mostly value. Uh, any investor that has money on the sidelines, and right now, I think you know somewhere in the ballpark of five trillion dollars, I would get it to work here. Uh, prices are great, and I think the economy's got uh, a, a lot of legs to go up here.